Welcome. I preach to some small crowds, but this is the smallest. It's just Dan and I here this morning. And we'll continue to bring uh, the messages throughout the time that we're separated uh, because of the COVID-19 uh, issues. And uh, we're going to continue on with our, our Lenten journey in Surprise the World. Uh, the book by that name, uh, written by Michael Frost, encourages us to live questionable lives. Lives that are, are so different from the world that, that others might ask us, why do you do that? And then we might have an opportunity to tell them about our faith in Christ. Michael Frost uh, has, in his book, lifted up five different habits that we can develop to live those questionable lives, those surprising lives. And he calls it the Bell Model, and it's bless, eat, listen, learn, and scent. And when we started, we looked at bless, and that was uh, very simple. We had lots of great ideas. You did a wonderful job in blessing the world. Then we went on to eat last week. And unfortunately, that was the week that they shut down all the restaurants. And uh, so you had to get a little more creative if you were going to eat with somebody, or maybe you had to postpone that. Uh, but for all the troubles that uh, the COVID-19 caused us this last week, uh, this week it's actually going to help us. Because the theme for this week is listen. Listen to the Holy Spirit. And our social distancing actually may help us to do that. Give us an easier way to listen to the Spirit. Now, listening to God actually may be one of the most questionable ways that we can live. The world actually blesses others. The world eats with others. So you have to, to do some things very different to get noticed that way. But if you're listening to God, well, that's not something that the world often does. Years ago, in preparing to be a, a pastor, I had to, to take psychological tests. So they wanted to make sure that I didn't have some kind of psychosis or something. And I can remember one of the questions that I wrestled with was the one that, that said, true or false, God speaks to me. And I thought, well, if I answer this true, then the person administering the test is going to say, oh, this person uh, has delusions that God speaks to him. But, of course, it was true. God does speak to me just as God speaks to you through the Holy Spirit. And we seek that in our lives. As Christians, we seek to listen to the Holy Spirit. But how do we do that? Well, there, there's several different ways that we can tune into the Holy Spirit and notice what God is saying to our lives. And three of them are solitude, silence, and prayer. Now, solitude is something that is probably easy to come by right now. Sometimes it takes being by ourselves to listen to God's voice. When there's always people around us and always activity, we have a hard time in listening to what the Spirit says. But uh, perhaps now you have more solitude than you've had in a long time going to look at the story in 1 Kings 19 of Elijah. Elijah was a prophet of God, and he was under threat of death by King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. They were seeking to do him in, and so in fear, Elijah fled out into the wilderness, deep into the wilderness, 40 days journey. And we're going to pick up the story as he is holed up in a cave out of fear, far away from other people. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with a sword. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. 
for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountain apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. Some translations call it a still, small voice. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. And then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Now the story continues, but for our purposes, we see that Elijah has, has fled. He's separated himself. He's gone into a place of solitude. And there in that cave, the voice of God comes to him in a gentle whisper, in a still, small voice. The fears of COVID-19 have driven us to many places, and perhaps you're by yourself right now. And we can look at that as, as an awful sentence, as something terrible, but we can also look at it as a unique opportunity for solitude. Now, solitude can be experienced in many ways. Uh, one, ways we can, when we, ah, one way we can use this solitude is to get outside. Maybe you can go out into your yard. Maybe you can take a walk in a park as long as there aren't other people there. The National Park Service just declared uh, this past week that all national parks would be free so that could, people could get out and enjoy and enjoy that. And in the newspaper on Friday, there's an article that says, for mind and body, add time outdoors to virus plans. And I would say, for mind and body and soul, add outdoors. Getting outside not only gives us fresh air, but it allows us some solitude and the ability to connect with the Holy Spirit. But maybe you can't get outside. Maybe you are in your home and you're all by yourself and it feels like it's house arrest. But that too can be an opportunity for time alone with God, for some real solitude. And even if it isn't uh, in our homes or, or outdoors that we're completely alone, our calendars have also given us a time of solitude. I don't know about your calendar, but it used to be full every single day, almost every moment. I'd schedule something. But lately, I've been crossing them out because we can't do those things. But what a time to spend with God. Maybe for the first time ever, you don't feel compelled to rush through your prayers and to, to uh, skip your devotional reading or or shortchange your Bible lessons, maybe for the first time ever, this solitude of the calendar and our, our location allows us to really dig in deep. Maybe you can actually listen to God and reflect and meditate on the Scriptures. Psalm 1 says, Blessed are those who love the Lord's instruction and meditate on His instructions day and night. Social distancing actually gives us some opportunity to do that. Well, solitude is one thing, but even in our solitude, we can fill our lives with activities and noise. And so another way that we can listen to the Spirit is by, by having times of silence, silence where we can listen and maybe hear God. A few weeks ago, the confirmation class went on a retreat to the United Methodist Church in Red Wing. And there we, we separated from the normal stuff of noise and such. And we had time for solitude and some time for silence. We worshiped in a silent way till well after midnight. And we heard the story of Samuel in 1 Samuel 3. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days the word of the Lord was rare and there were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. 
the lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I didn't call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood there calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Sometimes we need to to listen. And to do that, we need to, to turn off the other voices. To be by ourselves in a church is one thing, or to be by ourselves at home, but, but we need to turn off the noise as well. And maybe that's the noise of the television with the constant 24-7 coverage of COVID-19. Or maybe that's turning off your phone and the things that you're continuing to do on that. Or maybe it's turning off that internal dialogue in our heads where we're always talking, talking to ourselves but never really listening. There's a way to do that, to turn off the internal dialogue, and that's a breath prayer. Back when we did our series on prayer, we talked about the breath prayer. It's just a one-sentence statement that you can use to bring your focus back to God. It could be something like the sinner's prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. Or it could be the peace of Christ that passes all understanding. But here in this story of Samuel, we get perhaps the one that fits best with listening. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. If we use that breath prayer in the midst of that internal dialogue, it can bring us back into an attitude where we can actually hear the Holy Spirit speak. Well, the third item on the list is prayer. And here I'm not talking about just any prayer. I'm talking about listening prayer. Not requests, not even a breath prayer, but simply asking God questions and then listening to what the Holy Spirit says. Questions such as, What would you have me learn today? What would you have me do today, given this situation? Who can I bless even now? And then listen to the Holy Spirit. See what what the Holy Spirit reveals to you. The challenge for this week is to spend at least one period of time listening to what God might say through the Holy Spirit. And you can use solitude and silence and prayer to do that. And during this COVID-19 time, we perhaps have uh, more opportunities than ever to live up to that challenge, to set aside one period of time to be with the Lord and to just listen. But wait, there's more. As they say, there's one more step that we can take to listen to the Holy Spirit to live missionally, and to surprise the world. And that is to listen to others. The Holy Spirit is in their lives too. Even those who don't know that there is a Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is working on them. Methodists call that prevenient grace. The grace of God that works in our lives even before we come to God. That grace that is preparing our hearts and our minds to have faith. And we can learn from what the Holy Spirit is doing in other people's lives if we just listen to them. I learned this lesson from District Superintendent Fred Vanderworth. 
He was formerly a missionary to the Ukraine. And Fred practiced what I would call listening evangelism. He didn't come into a, a new country and just dump Jesus on them. No, instead, when he would meet new people, he would listen to their story, and he would ask them questions. And then they would give him an opportunity for him to tell his story and to share Christ. Listening to people is perhaps one of the most surprising things that we can do because the whole world wants to talk, but very few people want to listen. And if you listen to somebody, you will bless them. But not only will you bless them, you'll also earn the right to share your story and to share what Jesus has done in your life. And then even more than that, in listening to them and seeing how the Holy Spirit has worked in their life, you might actually get a message from God as well. So there you have it, four different ways. We can use solitude, silence, prayer, and also listening to other people. And I hope that you will set aside a time this week, and perhaps more than one, to listen to God through using one of those things. But I have to admit that listening can be difficult sometimes, because sometimes you'll hear stories that you want to respond to, you want to fix them, you want to take care of everything. You want to respond with the perfect Bible verse, the perfect word of encouragement. You want to wish that you had some psychological training so that you could help them through these difficulties. But really, God is not asking from you to have all of that. If you have it, great. But if not, God is simply asking you to listen to others, to listen to the Spirit, and to respond. I have a little note on my desk that I've kept by my phone for a long time. And I put it there to remind myself of how to respond if I answer that phone and somebody on the other end has things that I don't feel I can handle. It has simply two points. It says, first, listen. And second, point to Jesus. That's all you have to do. Listen and point to Jesus. Well, I do hope you will set aside time again, rise up to the challenge, and to use the opportunities that this COVID-19 crisis is providing us to connect with God and to listen to the Holy Spirit. It is uh, perhaps a silver lining to this uh, blessing uh, or curse that we may be experiencing now Everything is usually a mix of both. And God can work good in all things, even something as awful as what we're going through now. So my prayers are with you, and I know you're praying for each other, and we'll get that time uh, might be shorter than we expect. Let us pray. Lord, thank you that you are in the midst of this, we struggle with what we're going through and there are people who are sick there are people whose livelihood has been disrupted there are people who are filled with fear and worry but wherever we are whether we are in our homes whether we're in a nursing home or hospital whether we are out in creation may we be reminded by your spirit that you are with us and may you help us to listen to others as they go through this experience as well. May we surprise the world by the way that we listen to you, by the way that we love. So protect us and be with us and shorten the time until we can gather again and praise you in this place. In Christ's name, amen.